So welcome or welcome back to Fame from Friday. For the second case for this week, we are going to Buffalo, New York. Uh, I can imagine if most of you that are probably watching this have heard of Bonnie and Clyde. I will not be discussing Bonnie and Clyde for this video. Will I be discussing in the future? Possibly, but not this soon, if that makes sense, considering um how much they're kind of like over talked about. This couple happened before Bonnie and Clyde, so they're kind of referred to as like America's original gangster couple, but they're not as well known as Bo for Bonnie and Clyde, maybe because there's not as much information. Who knows? I'm definitely going to give what is publicly known down below. Most of the information regarding this couple or this gang, because there's like multiple people, it comes from a book. I did not read the book, but I will link the book down below on the Amazon link because pretty much every article was like highly recommending this book, so it must have been pretty good. However, I was not able to purchase and read said book in time because it was almost 300 pages. So, hope you understand. Uh, shout out to the author, Glenn, and of course, we'll link it down below if I remember to. So with that being said, I'll have my other sources for this story down below. I'm going to quit my rambling and let's go get started. So we're going to start off with Margaret. Uh, Margaret Teresa Mesler, so maiden name, okay, this is before they, her and our male counterpart get together. Uh, she was born March 2nd, 1903 in Baltimore, Maryland. The counterpart, Richard Reese Whitmore, because it's the Whitmore gang, so we were taking after his last name. He was born September 8th. Um, sorry, 1901, so he's like two years older than Margaret. He would go to reform school, so I assume he was like a troubled kid, and then go to jail. That's best by what he went to jail for, but he went to jail. So the two of them meet, that's best by how they meet, but they meet, and they get married in October of 1921. And then apparently, with like eight days after they get married, he goes and breaks into a neighbor's house, apparently gets a suitcase, fills it up with like clothes and other valuables, and just walk straight out the front door. So then, of course, you imagine he is caught and arrested within a day. And then he is sentenced to, like, one to ten years in prison. Margaret, because back then, I guess, women couldn't really work or she didn't want to work. Uh, job options, you know, for women were kind of limited back then. Because, again, this is, like, this is 1921. So we're talking about here. So she goes and moves back in with her mother while Richard's in jail. And apparently while Richard's in jail, he's making connections for his gang that is known as the Whittemore Gang. So uh, these uh, men apparently included Bernard... Mordialdo, Pasquale, Pasquale Ciccarelli, probably pronounced that wrong, uh, Joseph Ross, Morris Goldberg, Leopold Gilton, Anthony Palladino, and apparently brothers Jake and Leon Kramer. So then in April 1924, um, he is released. He and Margaret go steal $350 from a confectionery shop, which, you know, obviously doesn't sound like much now, cause that, but again, this is 100 years ago, so obviously $350 back then is worth could get you a lot more now. Could get you a lot more back then than could now. So then on February 20th, 1925, apparently by that point he is already back in jail again. I don't know if it was for that robbery, but it said he was back in jail by that time. And so then apparently he would hold one guard at gunpoint and apparently kill another another one. And the one that he killed, his name was Robert Holtzman. So then four days later, uh, they rob a dairy pay payroll shipment in Baltimore, and apparently they robbed like $16,034. Again, this is 100 years ago. You could do a lot of that back then. So then three weeks later, because obviously that's not enough, we're on a whole we're on a whole robber spree at this point, Wall Holtzman, and they robbed him of $8,792 after they beat him unconscious. So also he can't be a witness, but I guess they admitted to it later. That's how we know it's, it's, it was them that did it. So then October 29th, 1925, they rob a armory truck, two people are killed, they make off with 100 k and a stolen car, and a $10,000 reward is put out for any information. Basically, you know, you can bring them in and arrest them, you know, because obviously they're dangerous because they're killing people. On January 11th, 1926, they rob Albert Gudris and Emmanuel Verman of 175 grand and gems. And apparently this is like their biggest win ever, so they're celebrating for like the next two months. And some of the members, that's best by who exactly, but some of the members are apparently doing heroin. And little they know, apparently that was like their last bust. But it was their biggest known bust that they confirmed was this group. So an FBI informant apparently would uh, turn in, basically turn on Richard and give his location. Eight members are arrested on March 19th. Richard's like, look, I'll confess to whatever you want. Just release Margaret. Because I guess... what. What her involvement is, we don't know the extent of her involvement, but he's like, I don't want my wife in jail. So, release my wife, you can convict me of whatever you want. So, in April 1926, there's a hung jury in Buffalo. He is sentenced, 
he is sent to Baltimore. So you go uh, be tried for Robert, the little prison guard that you killed. You need to go get tried for his murder. Because well, obviously we're not going to forget about that. Jake and Leon, the brothers, they get like 40 years each. And he and Richard is sentenced to death. Margaret apparently will get released. So I assume like acquitted was what we call it in modern day terms. After she testified against her co-defendant. So like complete immunity. And she got to live out to like April of 1993. So she lived out, if I'm doing my math right, a good 90 years. Okay. And then of course, Richard, go back to him. He was executed, executed August 13th, 1926. So yeah, that's pretty much the original um, gangster couple. The lesser known gangster couple. Because you know, we always focus on Bonnie and Clyde. I definitely thought that case was interesting. Um, if you knew of this case prior to me covering it, I guess if that makes sense. Um, definitely let me know. I don't really have any, really anything to say. I guess, like, do you think Margaret should have been acquitted? What do you think her involvement was? Do you think that she should have got complete immunity for testifying against her co-defendants? Definitely know what you think down below. Um, I cover Faith Females three times a week. Subscribe for more Faith Females, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!